Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Winberg. As per usual, I am your DM and host, Commander Rod. Thank you for being here. Today I'm joined by only two players, but that's all we'll need. Uh, say hi, everyone. Um, what the hell? <laughs> Yo, he said. Exactly. So, welcome back once again as we prepare ourselves for a very important chapter in Winburg. This is session 36, and we're finally back. Last we left off, we had Saltbrook come face to face with his his dead daughter, Lyra, or Lyra, however you want to call her, Lyra Salt Saltbrook, upon Fairhaven, the town where he was from, the, 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 the capital city from whence Saltbrook came, and now faced with the visage of his daughter, he is challenged to a fight. And we do have our initiative order already set up. Um, Lyra will be going first, Saltbrook, you'll be going second in the order so far. However, we do have a few friends that will be joining us in this um, in this battle. And uh, we're about to find out who they are. Pardon? Uh, Saltbrook, as you're standing face to face with your daughter, she extends a hand towards one of the openings of the house. And as she does, you see this, these magic particles appear around her. And as this happens, you Rod. hear it. Rod, that, what's up? Can you stream on Discord? I was going to say, you're not streaming the actual uh, tabletop oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There we go. Babe. <laughs> there we go. Can y'all see now? Yeah. Yes. There we go. There we go. Um, you hear the clinking and clanking <laughs> right outside. And several Warforged Stand up from the destroyed bodies around you. Some of them are missing hands, limbs. Others are missing their entire head completely. Others crawl around on the ground, but they surround the house. And I am going to number them because we will need it. Today is a battle day. Combat day. And Ethel. As soon as you notice these Warforged clambering up to their feet, and I'm going to give them initiative here. Um... Uh, we have seven. Seven. Oh, I don't have. Full seven. D twenty. And we'll see what we get from there. Okay. Uh huh. So we have Warforged one. Rolls an eighteen. Warforged. The Warforged one is going to go before anyone else I know. Warforged two rolls a 16. Goes before you, Saltbrook. Warforged three rolls a 12. Warforged four rolls a 10. Warforged five rolls a 9. Forge 
six rolls a seven. Well, for it's seven, rolls a two. It's just like Ethel, give me an initiative check, please. An initiative check? Yeah, what an initiative, initiative roll. Ooh, this could be a nine today, Buckaroo. Hirith gets an 18. You got a nine. So you will be going after Warforged 4. All right. Since you're all caught by surprise on the outside, the first to move will be Warforged number one. Warfrog. And yes. Warfrog. I want to make sure that everyone here has their movement measured. Warforged one will immediately charge in to both Kira and Gimnir. And they will roll to attack. That's a crit on the first one. But does he have Anamantine on? I don't believe he does. Auspicious. Nope. Damn. Plus three plate, but... I told him he should have bought some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you should. And an 18 on the second, so that's a hit on Gimnir and a hit on Kira. He will hit them with Paralyzing Touch. And they will roll con saves. Both of them. Gimnir fails his. And Kira also fails hers. They're both paralyzed. Oh my god. <laughs> they have both broken their spinal cords and will never walk again. And they will each take... Well, the damage will be different for each. It will be 46. That's 19 on Gimnir. And Kira will be 15. They are thrown back 10 feet and currently paralyzed. Thalbrook. Lyra yeah. will charge towards you. Uh, there we go. And as she charges in, she attacks you with her longsword. Does a 15 hit? No. -uh. No. So, first attack misses. She attacks a second time. And she misses again. So, Solbrook, you just see as your daughter's face just just switches into this. It's if you didn't know any better, you would see this as complete and utter murderous rage. And she bursts forth, trying to attack you. And with the glaive that she has in hand, she she pierces towards you once. And on the second one, she gives it a wide, sweeping slash with it, missing you both times. And I like to think I deflected them. And as she stands in front of you, she looks into your eyes and she asks, Why didn't you die with us? Damn, bro. I wrote that question. I don't know how to fucking answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Warforge number two will begin moving towards Kirith. 
They will dash with their action and stop in front of her. Saltbrook, it is your turn. I didn't die here. Because I was the last one left. There was nothing left for me to stand for. Um, and then with that, I will... Do I have to do arcana checks for any magic I use in this realm? Um, yes. Yes, you will. Okay. Can I use that funny lightning rod I picked up to enhance my lightning abilities Ooh. so I can maybe not do that? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. You can, That's... you will bypass the arcana check by using an arcane focus. Okay, very cool. Good stuff. Uh, Yes. I will then proceed to do a Liu's <laughs> Lightning Punch. Do uh, it. Which I believe metal armor. I think she's wearing metal armor. It looks like it anyways. Uh, which will give me advantage on the attack roll. Alright, go for it. <gasps> There's a 22 hit. Yes, yes it does. Very cool. Uh, and then I will then proceed to do the damage. Roll for it. Oh my god, dude, one dice is going... Oh my god, it's still going. What the fuck? Uh, 43 <laughs> damage. Ooh, Jesus Christ, man. Nice. As you bury your fist deep into her, um, into her chest plate, you see her take a step back and stagger. This is the first time that she is seeing real combat as a revenant spirit. And she takes a moment and takes a deep breath. And you can see that she's smiling. And she speaks to you. You have been given a second chance, father, to rewrite the legacy of our family, to protect those who depend on you with an unyielding fervor. With my death, I have learned the true strength lies not in avoiding pain, but in embracing it in harnessing its power and transmuting it into a force for good. And as her reaction, he will cast Hellish Rebuke. Of course. That I will be... cast Counter Spell and slap her in the face. What level? I'm not actually going to do that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take a little bit of damage. You will take 2d10 fire damage. Is there a save for that? Nope. Darn. You take nine points of damage. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> Acceptable. Anything Acceptable else? Damage. Um, just some of pain. <clears throat> Life has been nothing but pain since I had to run. I know this better than anyone. Avoiding pain is not something I know to do. And then I'll end my turn there. All right. Warforged three and four. We'll move. This one jumps on top, and this one also. And they'll both use their uh, heavy crossbows. Plus six to hit 3d10 plus two. So I'm going to roll these physically so you can see them. Who are they attacking me? Or are they shooting at the party? They're attacking you. That's rude. Get into my duel, nerd. <laughs> How many? 3D tech. As for their long short is the eight. Alright. The first one will roll. A nine plus no. six. Yeah, that's a miss. Yep. They attack again. A four nope. plus six, they miss again. Now, the other Warforge will attack. Yep. First attack an 18 plus six. That does hit. Okay, that's a hit. 3d10 plus two. That'll be 13, 15 points of damage. Ouch. And on the second attack, 16 plus six. It does hit. All right. That'll be 15 points of damage. Ouch. 
though, Solbrook, you hear the as they jump up and land on the second floor of your house. And as they look down on you, they pull out these crossbows that are embedded on their arms and they point them towards you and they fire at you. The first two miss as you manage to move just in time, but catching you in, in the off foot, off balance, the other two attacks hit and they land um, into your right thigh, both of them. Not this again. Ethel, it is your turn. Okay. Um, since these are now one of my favorite enemies. Also, sorry, I just dropped something on my laptop. Are <laughs> these all juggernauts or are these just the models you have? These are all juggernauts. Okay. Um, what then information could I recall that would be helpful? Uh, give me an intelligence check. Intelligence check. Oh. And I believe you have advantage on that. I would. I think that's enemy. how it works. Yeah. Is this the intelligence? That's a saving. Where is my fucking just? God damn it! There it is. Sorry. For an intelligence roll, I'm not very oh, smart. Oh no no no! You have oh. Mm, you have advantage what? on wisdom checks involving your favorite enemies, and on intelligence checks to recall information about them. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. And you have your level. 10 right now? Yeah. You have a plus three bonus to your weapon attacks to uh, to damage against Oh, them. sick. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about a 12 intelligence check? A 12 intelligence check. Uh, Ethel, you recognize that these are Warforged of the eighth forging specifically. Um, towards the end of the forgings of the Mechanicus. So these are still uh, these are still Warforged that were uh, forged specifically by House Caneth. This is before the Mechanicus took control over the Crucibles, which are the, the forges that create the Warforged. Okay, that's lovely, but what about weaknesses? <laughs> uh, you understand that the Juggernauts are um, they have low acceleration, meaning mm -hmm. that their speed is lower than other Warforged, and that they depend on heat sinks to not overheat. You do not see any heat sinks on these Warforged. Okay. Me when the mass produced model isn't as good as the regular one. <laughs> Then I will take a bit of movement. Well, hold on. show me the map a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. What this kind of movement would we be? Point. Yeah, what kind of movement would we, we would we be talking about to get me on top of like the ruin to the right? Um. Yeah, you you'd have you'd have some movement left. Okay, sick. That I will take that point. I like that. Um, first of all, I will tell Kirith, like, they're big, slow, and stupid. <laughs> and then I will fire directly at the one in front of her, most of all. Okay. As you say that, Kirith turns towards you and says, Ah, cool! So just like you! Perfect! I know how to deal with that. <laughs> Roll to hit. Would an 18 hit? Yes, it will. Okay. So 13, but then plus 3 against the favorite enemy would be 16 damage. Yes. Um... I'll hit the second one just to get some damage in while we can here. All right, one second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no worries, King. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes the project we man just gets me. <laughs> 
One second. How much damage was that on the first one? That was 16. 16. Okay. Give me a second. I'm going to make calculations for every single one of the Warforged. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. And you hit Warforge number two. So that'll yeah. be down to 84. Well, I didn't roll the damage in the second one yet. Well, which one did you hit? Oh, the first one? Yeah, yeah that this one. is number two. Yeah. Oh, okay. And this is number one. Okay, then I also, for my second attack, I guess I would roll to hit the second one, which was 28 and then 15 damage. Alright. Because... I'm going to presume the 28 fucking hit. <laughs> this is a wild fucking guess. Alright. Cool. Uh, Warforge 5, 6, and 7. Oops. Oh, there's an extra one. I, I counted wrong. Oh, baby. I'll just delete this one. I meant to have seven. All right. Five, six, and seven. This one will start climbing and it'll try to grapple you. It'll roll strength. That is a 25. Oh my fucking god. Now roll strength to see if you're grappled. Plus your strength modifier, obviously. Yeah, I think I'm fucking grappled. <laughs> Not if you get a, a D20, uh, a nat 20. Well, I didn't, so. Okay. Uh, uh Ethel, you see out of the corner of your eye this massive fucking Warforge just crawl its way over to you, climb up the hill that you're in. And grab you by the by the waist, essentially. Its hands just essentially go all the way around your waist, and it pulls you down over to where he is. And it will it will headbutt you. <laughs> I would be dead, realistically, just like. Uh, it'll roll to hit with advantage because you're because you're currently. Restrained. Five misses. Oops. And a 14 hits right on the money. That'll will it will be a glancing blow. So you'll take three points of damage. Okay. Acceptable. <laughs> I think I'll survive. This one will move and Pure dash. And dash to be able to get up. Uh, on top of this. I'm gonna fall on top of Ethan. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry, my bad. And this one will also dash to be able to get right here. Here it's turn. Here it will cast Eldritch Push. Onto the Warforge, it is uh, 15 feet line. So she's going to move slightly to the side in between these two to be able to catch both of them in one line. And it's a saving throw that they must perform. Come for on, Kira! For the first one, this one saves. Second one... Second one does not save. And they get pushed. They take 18 points of damage. Nice. I love my wife. I love my giant demonic wife. <laughs> okay. They're knocked prone. She will then 
Mm. Yeah, she'll she'll use Eldritch Push once again. Has to be twice. She'll take an attack of opportunity right here. It'll miss, and she gets into a line to use Eldritch Push once again. This one fails, and we'll take 3d8. Two. Taking six points of damage. And being knocked prone. The second one. Goes. Yep, they fail it again. They fail as well, I should say. Yes. And they'll take. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is just beautiful. Okay, Zara can keep his soundboard rights. Yeah, <laughs> I agree, I agree. All right. Jesus, Kira. She manages to knock all of them prone. God, and then I love she, you. she uses her remaining movement uh, over on this side. Warforged 1 will use their movement to stand back up. Well, use their action. And now Lyra. Lyra's turn. Saltbrook, she will stare right into you and she'll use Vengeful Glare. Uh, you must make a Wisdom saving throw. Uh, that'll be with disadvantage. DC uh, 12. All right. Oh, it's a 10. 12 plus 3, so 15. 15. Yeah, it's not happening, Chief. The disadvantage? No. Yeah. You are now paralyzed. Until what? you take damage or until the end of your next turn. Bruh. Once the paralysis ends, you will be frightened you know for Can one I minute. Can I counterspell that shit? <laughs> counterspell that shit. It's not a spell. God damn you. <laughs> oh, bro. This is cheating, and you know it. Do I? Yes. I'm talking to Lyra. Oh. Cheating and you know it. Uh, so you will be frightened um, until you succeed the uh, DC 16 wisdom saving throw with disadvantage. At the end of Why each of your turns. Why is all disadvantage? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because you're staring down at your daughter who's trying to fucking murder you. Why would I be afraid of that? I want to get out of that situation and go... You just you just okay. proved it for me. You want to get out of this situation. You're terrified. Nah, I want to get out of this paralyzation and then go. <laughs> oh, we're gonna punch my mic again, but I decided to. <laughs> Respect and... yourself, control team. And then after that, she will cast Hunter's Mark on you. I'm just going to give a disappointed glare. Like, really, really. All right, Warforged number two. They'll stand up, and that'll be their turn. Thalbrook, you may uh, you may attempt to break the vengeful glare paralysis. Well, at the end of your of this turn, you will you'll be out of paralysis. I shall try to break the glare anyways. Okay. Hua! It's a nine. Nope. You just, <laughs> just you just look at her and she's just staring intently deep into your soul. And she asks that, you. She's gonna see this though, before you give me the question. It's just gonna yeah. be a glare of just like really? Just sheer disappointment. This is cringe. Cringe. She asks you, was that banner yours to take? Nobody else could have taken it. 
And it was better to take it than leave it in the hands of the enemy. You know that. Hands of the enemy. You still think in terms of enemies and friends. I do when they're shooting at me. Look above you. It was you your mission to you, save us. Do you not see who your allies are now? Look at you, relying on the very things that destroyed our home. Just at so least they were here. I left when you were all dead and the city was burnt. And whose fault was it? You know whose fault it was. It wasn't the man who, let, who was last alive in this godforsaken city. The warforged above you will fire again. I'm gonna spit at them. <laughs> As you should, King. First one. Thank you, Queen. So true. <laughs> uh, no. Nope, that misses. Second attack. Crit. No, it does not, because I have an <laughs> armor. Oh! No. Okay, so it's just a regular hit. Yep. Period. You stand a prepared king. <laughs> what a crit, no. 16 plus two. Three, is it? No, it's two. So okay. 18. Oh, 18. Me almost dead. Other Warforge attacks, -uh. misses. Seven. -uh. They miss those. How are they missing stationary targets? And after that, they will move one of them. You see Dexterity is not one himself. of their highest modifiers. He's disappointed himself. He's like, oh, man. Oh, man. Evil, <laughs> your turn. Uh, I am still grappled? Yeah. You may attempt to break the grapple. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's see how that goes. Pull it a basketball. Break his ankles. <laughs> um, would it be a, a strength saving? Strength save, yep. Yeah. Okay. God damn it. Nine. And now I need to roll for the... Roll for the Warforge to maintain a grapple on you. That's a plus Why seven. Do do plus seven of strength. They do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's what I thought. While grappled, you can still attack, but you're, you're limited to unarmed strikes. Right, yeah. Punch the metal monstrosity. Do it. Deal five damage. <laughs> For any reason whatsoever, would intimidation work against a reanimated dead robot? You may certainly try. <laughs> um. I will try to headbutt it back. <laughs> okay. Roll a hit. Uh, we're. Where's, yeah, where's my fucking unarmed strike? This is really funny. What an 18 hit! Yes, it would. Oh my fucking god. Deal that Are two you points of damage, baby. It, yeah, it's it's two points of damage. Big. Big if true. Big if true. You just hear this as you headbutt it. She just goes, <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Ow. Now, Warforged 5, 6, and 7. Seven will toss you against that tree. They roll strength. Okay, that wasn't a roll. Okay. Seven. Um, okay. That'll be a 12. So you are going to take six points of damage, people, as you're thrust against the tree. Okay. Roll an acrobatic save for me. Okay. Hold on. Oh, damn. DC 10. Okay. 14. How much? 14. 14. You manage to land on your feet. Fuck oh, yeah, I do. It turns and charges at you, though it will not attack. That was seven. Now we have six. Five will stand back on their feet, and six will turn and attack with the crossbow against Kirith. Oh my Wait, god. Wait, did Gimnir and... Does Gimnir and... Uh, Completely paralyzed. Ah, uh, well, they don't even have an initiative. Nope. Damn. 
Uh, what is the plus on this? Six? Six. They will miss the first one. And the second one as well. Here at the turn. She will climb no up. And she will climb up and go for a shove action. With a plus three to strains. A 15. And the Warforged. Ah! Oh, doesn't work. Second attack, she crits. <laughs> As she should, my giant queen. What's the height of this? So about 10 feet. That'll be 2d10. So 15 points of damage. And it'll roll an athletic save. It falls prone. All right, Warforged number one. Oh. I'm really fucking up this flamenco music. Lyra's turn. She will. She will shove you out. Or at least attempt to. Oh, well, you're paralyzed, so all uh, you can strength check. This is facts. You will fall prone and take two points of damage. You're eating all of my moves, Rod. Stop. <laughs> this is just bullying at this point. She, <laughs> she charges you and she will attack. And here's the thing, when you're prone and she's within yeah, five feet, I it's know, an auto crit. Uh, no. I'm immune to critical hits, sir. Well, that's true. She will auto hit, <laughs> though. Yeah, there you go. That'll be a... That'll be ten points of damage. Ouch. Warforged number two. So shouldn't, shouldn't uh, Gimnir and Kira be unparalyzed at the end of this turn? Or are they just like out of the fight entirely? They got paralyzed by a Warforged. Not like, it's not like Lyris. I, do you have to like throw a rock at them? Essentially, you gotta get them out of it. Oh, bro's in this, <laughs> bro's in a dance, in a fucking trance like a hole. Warforged will attack Kirith. with a plus, plus five. That's a dirty 20, so they miss. Second attack, they'll miss again. All right, Saltbrook, your turn. Yeah, I've had enough of this. I'm finna awaken. You're awakening? Yeah, I'm on five health, dude. I don't have another choice right now. All right. <laughs> What type of awakening? The big one, obviously. Ascended? Yeah. You cheesed me for the last time. <laughs> I just have to remember how to activate it. A lightning bolt falls from the sky and it lands on your on your banner. You feel completely electrified. And you're brought up to your feet. You feel pure lightning coursing through your veins. What is your action? Um, I think another leaves lightning punches in order. All right. With advantage. It's going to be off. Oh, oh, 17. Does that hit? A 17 hits. Oh, thank God. All right. 
Wow. Oh, it's going off again. Let's go. Uh, 38 times 2. Let me get my calculator. Out. That is 76. Damn, you're quick on the drop. Yep, 76 damage. Then I have to take that. Is that use my thing on the other one? There you go. So bonk. Out. As she takes the hit, she is pushed back slightly, and she stares at you, and she asks, Did Mom make it with you? Is it not clear? It was the last one to leave. Why are you the last one? Because by the time I had gotten here, everyone was dead. Try to lead who I could find out, but we were surrounded. We goddamn know that. And after all of this, you gave yourself up. You took the easy way out and you gained power by whatever this is? Pathetic. Not all of us have a choice. Some of us have to do what we do to ensure something of what we did here lives. There is always a choice, Father. And it was this or death. And death would have lost everything that we fought to build in Fairhaven. War Force number three. We'll jump down. What, were you done with your, th with your turn, Saltbrook? Um, I don't think I have a bonus action. Nope, because you awakened. Yeah, no, that's it then. All right. Ethel, a second Warforged lands right next to you. Of course it does. And they'll roll to attack with a plus five. They missed the first one. 15 plus five, dirty 20. That's a hit. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Bakuru? Three, D8. 13 points of damage, uh, plus three, so 16. Next up, Warforge number four. It'll turn and fire at you, Solbrook. Mean. Two, that's a miss. Second, a crit fail. He is. His crossbow fucking explodes in his own arm. Yeah, the, the crossbow malfunctions due to how long it's been since it was used last. It just the malfunctions and completely snaps as it tries to fire a bolt. Ethel, it is your turn. I'm really thinking because I don't want to get my shit rocked. Um, How much health do you currently have? Um, like 50 some. Okay, 59. But I use Pass Without Trace as like a smoke bomb <laughs> to you, get you distance. You absolutely can. You will okay. be subject to two opportunity attacks, though. But that's what I'm, that's what I'm asking. If I, like if obscuring them would kind of protect me from opportunity attack. So Pass Without Trace is a spell that you're going to be casting on yourself. Mm -hmm. But because it is a spell, you will be taking an opportunity attack. No. Oh, yay. What the fuck is this? Sorry, I got distracted by whatever the fuck you're playing on YouTube right now. 
It's from Yakuza. Go on. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> Could I ex machina call Valiant? <laughs> you can. Because he should just be circling. Yep. I could have him land on one. That would be great. I'm going to need it. Uh, I'm going to need an Arcana check. See how fast he gets here. An Arcana check? Oh, okay, sure, yeah. God damn it. I fucking hate D&D Beyond, man. <laughs> I start rolling physical dice like you. This is fucking, this is ass. He will be here in three turns. What? He's literally just circling. I know. Whatever, man. God. Joe Biden. Whatever, man. Yeah, fucking literally. Then I'll just roll to attack these fuckers. Go for it. I hate everything. <laughs> 22 is a hit. Yep. Which one are you attacking? Three or seven? Doesn't fucking matter. Um, I guess the one to my right first. Three. Roll that damage. 15 plus three will be 18. All right. That is... Okay. And then... Hmm. <laughs> Hold on, my, my brain is thinking. alter the size of spells or is it just like it that's, is what uh, it is no that's uh that's a sorcerer thing meta magic you can like alter how the spells come out i see twinned delayed um i think it's like intensified or something like that okay then i'll just roll to attack the one in front of me as well all right go for it Oh my god, dude. 17. 17 hits. I'll take it. 14. Um, and, and yeah, 17 damage. Oh, 17. All right. Five, six, and seven. Seven attacks, six gets up. Five will turn around and hear it from behind. Seven will attack. Twelve plus five, that's a hit. Long sword attack. Seventeen plus uh, three. So twenty points of damage. And the second attack will be 13. So, 33, I believe.
what's happening? One second, one second. Alright. Mm -hmm. Alright. For the attack against Hirith. 15 plus the 5. That's a miss. Yeah. Both misses. Alright. Hirith's turn. She will use... Arcane teleportation and teleport 30 feet. I I'd like to be able to see, please. You need to go around the tree, Rod. Right, well. Teleport up here. And she will use the rest of her movement to charge Lyra. She will not attack, though, because she has used her action. Warforge number one. That's just toxic. Uh, it's a miss on Gimnir. And another miss. Lyra's turn. Let's see. She will cast on herself Stone Skin, and she has become resistant to non magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. He will take two opportunity attacks, one from you and one from Kirith, Salbrook. Radical. Ooh, not 20, baby. Good shit. Ooh! 25, yeah, 25, be your own daughter. 25 for Kirith. Well, that's a hit from her. That'll be eight points of damage. Roll that damage, Salbrook. All right. Keep the Fuck out your daughter, boy. So it's gonna be 19. That's, oh, sorry, hold on. It's max damage. It's 26. Oh my god, seriously. It's giving me a Not fucking off. ad again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There we go. Want a break from the ads? Want a break from the ads? Really? I'm not getting an ad. Um, so you will deal. Oh, it's 12, 3 to 15. We got 19. 2d6. That's 12 plus 3. 15 plus 19. And that's multiplied by two because I'm also awakened to give me good old 68 damage. One off a funny number. There we go. 68? Yes. Good shit. Absolutely huge damage. Huge. Huge. Uh, yeah, it's just an opportunity attack. We're good. Warforge number two will collapse. L. Girl, why? As well as to. Warforge number six. He decided to. So no more Warforge number two. Oops. Ook. Oh my god. Ook. Ook. Oh. <laughs> I was ooking out, bro. What the hell? And six. They old. They can't exist forever. Salbrook. Yes. So while Lyra's stone, is she immobile? Or what nope. is it just immune? Stone skin just um, turns her skin into stone, essentially. She's still able to move. Normally, might I add. Yeah. But she's but any... now resistant to all non-magical melee attacks. Okay. Well, um... Hmm. Well, you know, I can just turn the greatsword into a pack weapon and then it does magic damage. 
But that would require bonus action, and goddamn, I need to heal. So I'm going to use bonus action to chug a greater healing potion for 4d4 plus 4. Yep. Which is going to get me 12, so 16 HP back. Not bad. Nice. Um, and then I still have a used lightning punch that I can throw at her. Go for it. Because why not? Oh! Okay, that's a 12. That's a miss. That's a miss. So, Saltbrook, as you charge in... Inspiration. My inspiration was eaten up by Awakening. I don't have a reroll. Exactly. So, as you charge in with your lightning punch, he just redirects your punch over to the side as if she knew it was coming. Ah, uh, well, you know what? It's the same attack I've done three times in a row, so that doesn't surprise me. If only you had stayed long enough to teach me, father. I believe I have surpassed you now. I think you're still yet to learn some tricks, Lyra. All right, Warforge three and four. Four will jump down and attack Kirith. Oh my God, there we go. Oh my God. Thank you, Warforge. Thank you. <laughs> 17 plus 5. That is a hit on Kirith. 19 plus 3. So 22. Second attack. 13 plus 5. No. Uh -uh. That's a that's a miss. Warforged four. Where did he go? <laughs> I thought he, he oh, fell over. That, that is four. Never mind. Uh, number three is what I'm looking for. There we go. Three will attack you. He ascends. He ascends <laughs> the stars. Wrong. I dodge. 14 plus 5. That's a Wrong. hit. Wrong. 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 <laughs> 9 plus 3. That's 12. This is this is facts. This is facts. I can't even catch. My goddamn dragon get here any slower. Mm, yes, actually. Another attack. 11 plus 5. That's a hit. Good. 14 plus 3. Good. Oh yeah, 17. that's right. You, you've got like mid armor. Shit, I forgot. Mid. Mid armor. AC four. Wait, hold on. Was that a fourteen? What's the hit on there? Mm. Huh? No, plus so five. That's a... Plus five. <clears throat> Damn, I was gonna say glancing blow. No, but nope. it's not a glancing blow. Ethel, your you turn. Should've... You should have taken the half plate ahead, right on the round of my halves. Wait, hold on. Oh my god, I don't even had. Oh, okay. What? Well, so because you took off, like, the adamantine last time, you didn't also then put the leather armor on me, so my armor class should have been 16 this whole time. Oh, that's okay. It's fine. I don't care. I'll, I'll heal you for 10 HP as a, as a backwards uh, thing. No, just do five. Alright. Mm, respect. Not making it easy for yourself. Big respect. Big respect. <laughs> I'll take the five of this. I'll take that king, don't worry. Uh, are you waiting for me to do something? Or is it my yeah, turn? It's your turn. Um, Is that Warforge actively going after Kira and Gidner? Uh, this one is number one. Okay. Uh, show me distance. Your current distance is 44 feet. Oh, uh, what does Steph get me? 
I don't remember. A Shardalon? 30. Yeah. Yeah, it gives you 30, but you can also use your movement. Oh, I can add movement to that? Yeah, you move, you cast the spell, make the teleport, and then you move. Oh, sure, yeah. Um. It's just that okay. the spell will be your attack action for the turn. Right, yeah. So you can get out of this dangerous situation here while damaging both of them without provoking an opportunity attack. So it's a smart yeah, thing to do. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm going for here. Um. You should probably try to wake up, give him the air. <laughs> Say, mm -hmm. hey, hey, wake up. Wake up, we're fighting. Hey, wake Can up. damage wake them up? <laughs> a little uh, smack across the face. Yes. Okay, I'll, I, uh, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Explosive arrows. Okay, yeah, I will Charlotte on step then through these biddies, through this crack, and kind of like out back. Yeah. Yeah, just give me the baseline 30 feet, I guess, for now. And then. Uh, well. Yeah, no, I want to kind of be behind him so he'd take the, the brunt of the damage. Okay, uh, that's, that's good. Roll damage on the two here. Yeah, yes, King. Thank uh, you. For one, it'll be eight, I guess. And then for the second Warforged, it'll be 11. For number three, which, what damage do you want to deal to which? Uh, Eight for the left, 11 for the right. That's fine. So eight for number seven. And 11 for number three. Mm -hmm. Yes, King. All right. Good shit. You're going to stay here? Um, yeah, because like I said, I kind of want him to take the brunt of my next. <laughs> All right. Number five and number seven. All up in my biz. Yep. Miss on the first one. 19 plus 5, that's a hit. Can you stop? <laughs> 13 plus 3, 16 points of damage. What? Can the bitch slap at least give me some distance on him? <laughs> nope. Did you say 16? 16. Stop bonking me, Saltbrook. <laughs> 16 times, Saltbrook. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. Worth every HP point. All right. Kirith is turn. He turns to fight the Warforged. Number four. He strikes with flame tongue. Misses the first one. Hits on the second with a 25. That'll be 11 points of damage to number four. There we go. Warforge number one. Roll again to attack Gimnir. 16 plus 5, 21. A miss. And again. Lyra. He's going to roll acrobatics. The vault around you. Eighteen plus eight. Jesus Christ, eight. That's a hit. Yep. Oh God. 
He'll hit you the first one for 13. And the second one, 22 to hit. That is a glancing blow. So make that uh, six. So 13 plus six. Still up. <laughs> Stalbrook, your turn. All right. Um, well, seeing as I am in severe pain, I'm going to change up the old strategy. Oh. Uh, I need to cast this at a third. I'm going to cast this as a fourth level, so it's going to be six extra. Okay, so then I'm going to cast Vampiric Tooch. Ooh because I am in pain and I need health. <laughs> okay. So I'm hoping this balls. You're fucking kidding me, dog. A two? Really? Again? I'm dead, bro. What an L. Um, damn. I mean, you can do it again. True, I have two attacks per action. This is, yeah. this is facts. It's a fucking one. Oh my, oh my god. god. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm just gonna chug another fucking greater healing potion then. It's a fucking. Uh, what do you call it? Bonus action. Uh, I'm gonna get even less this time, 15. Stalkrook, yeah, as you charge in with your right hand trying to connect with Lyra, she just bats it over to the side with her shield once. And the second time she bats it away with her glaive. I'm gonna look at the camera for a second. Oh, that's it. That's she all. will look at you and she will ask Why were the walls so weak, Father? And as she asks this, Saltbrook. You know she's not talking about the physical walls of the city. She's asking about something else. The general strategy was to fight them in the field where he thought we'd have an advantage. He hadn't left the damn bunker since the war started. He didn't know about those damn titans. Left me with a few thousand men left. You know what I'm asking you, father. It's not my responsibility on the walls. And then he's drilled. I had everything as close to prepare as I could, but my guard was sapped. But idiots! When that will you better. stop making excuses, Father? I'm going to reach into my satchel, and I'm going to throw a pretty old paper towards her. And it's something that I've held for a long time. Yeah. And it's a from a General Stillwell uh I can't think of the last name. Shit, I was gonna say Edgeworth and that's not gonna work. Burke. Burke. A Stillwell Burke. Signed, dated by the governor and by the general. That was stated orders to move the fuck out and fight them in the fields. And I told them no. -uh. But they didn't listen. Either. They didn't listen to me. So I've been going on for so long, they'd all been jabbing the brains thinking they could win. And now that you have power, Father, what will you do? What I've been doing for the last... How long has I been with the Windberg Wardens? What's my... It has now? been roughly three months. Yeah, there you go. I'm not going to mention my uh, coalition mercenary time. That's not going to be too long. Anyway, <clears throat> what I've been doing for the last three months, helping a town just like this one grow itself, strive, thrive, and defend what I have left. My memories and my friends. I'm going to point to Kirith in specific. Who may, may, may not be the best example right now, but she doesn't know that. <laughs> Stalbrook, as you say these words, you can feel your banner changing. Something about it feels heavier. 
feels more secure in your hands. And as you look to your side, you see that indeed it has changed. Oh, bye. And in your hand, you hold what is essentially built from the foundation, from the, the skeleton of the banner. You hold what is essentially a chain sword. It glimmers. It glimmers with the radiant energy that's surrounding you right now. And you gain an extra action. It's time to hit my daughter again. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be a... Uh, that'll be a plus 15 to hit. <laughs> what? Alright. Watch it be a nat one. If it's a nat one, I'm gonna laugh so much. Okay, well it was a 4 plus 15, so 19. So 19. I need you to roll. Uh, I need you to roll 1d8 plus 9. 1d8 plus 9. It's going to be 6 plus 9 is 15. Double that. 30. Pulpbrook, as you lift this massive sword, you notice that floating off attached to the pommel of this sword is the same fabric that composed the banner itself. And in it, you see an embroidery. An embroidery that you had never noticed before in the banner. And as you look at it, all of the aggressive intent that surrounded you, all of the, the murderous intent you felt from your daughter, it disappears. And her hand touches yours. You recognize the embroidery for what it is. It's an embroidery that she made all those years ago, representing you, her, and your wife, Lynette. She takes a step back.
down on your knees, you feel a warm, gentle hand touch the side of your face. This hand lifts your chin up, and in front of you, you see her, your daughter, as she was the last time you saw her. Not aged as she is here, young, a child. And in the back of your mind, you hear screaming, you hear anger, you hear just pure frustration. No! How dare you! Dare you rob me of the soul that rightfully belongs to me! You will pay, Saltbrook, dearly for what you have done! No one breaks a contract with Hell King Aragon of the Nine Hells! You will pay! cry about it and as she holds your face she smiles and disappears around you all of the war forged fall to the ground inoperant Kira and Gimnir snap back to reality And Saltbrook, though Lyra has disappeared, you feel a hand on your shoulder. And as you turn around, you see her. An ethereal, ghostly form of your young daughter. Only by confronting the darkness within could you ever emerge triumphant and find solace in the past. Allow the pain of the past to guide you, to fuel your resolve, to protect your new family with unwavering dedication. Let this pain become your strength, for in this crucible of battle, you have found your salvation, Father. Fulbrook, your pact with Aragon is no more. Your pact with the revenant spirit of your daughter has begun. Ah. W. Good job, everybody. Great work. That went way faster than I thought. <laughs> yeah. But because murder, it kill, went... Murder, murder, kill, murder. <laughs> well, because it went fast, that means we can now get on with some other stuff other than combat. Yippee! So, everyone... Levels up w. from this combat. Everyone is now level 11 total, I should say. As the dust settles around you, the rain that had been a constant this entire time. Let me just find where I put the, the fucking rain thing. Uh, where did I put it? Aha! There it is. <laughs> the rain that had been falling upon Fairhaven this entire time subsides. And as the war forged around you uh, crumble to the ground, you find yourselves once again in the silence of the wasteland. Oh my god. Nissen Cup. Oh my god, it's giving me fucking ads again. Take For once, I'm not getting it. Thank you, Nissen 
cup noodles. I appreciate that. Om nom nom nom. Anyway. What will you do? It's not for my <laughs> goofy ass to stand back up. Does the hellion finally fucking land? <laughs> yes, yes he does. Yes. And as he lands next to you, you see that he's like, he's all hyped up and ready to fly. Let me at him. I got my asses. Where what are you they? fucking sightseeing? It's a new realm. Can I fault me for wanting to take a look around? I told you to circle the perimeter. And I was. What? Five miles away? I fly really high. You know this. Oh my god. And see, you didn't even need my help. Are you two at least okay to Gimnir and Kira? Gimnir and Kira sort of just look at each other for a moment, and Gimnir asks, I'm... I'm not sure as to what just happened. And he looks down at the Warforged right in front of him. And... Huh. Did I do that, or did you do that? He points to you, Ethel. Well, you certainly did do it. Yeah, I sort of figured. And Kira looks at Gimnir and says, Well, at least you're not dead, big bro. <laughs> yeah, at least that. What would y'all like to do? <laughs> I was like, call out, Salt, Kira, you guys alive? <laughs> I'm going to stand my ass up and look at the funny sword. Uh, Sulfric, as you stare at this beautiful sword, you see it slowly losing it, its form and returning to, uh, to the banner. Well, <clears throat> time to go pick up my armor. As you walk back into your home, Fultbrook, the air seems refreshed. It's not stale anymore. Whatever cobwebs were here and there are gone. It's still ruined, but the dark presence you felt here is gone. And as you approach the armor, you will receive... Check your equipment. Tell me what you see. The Joe Biden special? What is this supposed to do? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a salt book lineage armor. Armor. Armor delicious armor. Read it to me. The uh, description. <clears throat> Though dented and rusted, this armor remains unbroken, isn't it? Powered by all members of the Saltbrook lineage that came before the user. Forged by Callahan Saltbrook III, the legendary blacksmith of Fairhaven, upon his entry to the Paladin Order, it is a plus three breastplate armor that, surprising light, still clanks and clacks as a disadvantage, and thus causes stealth uh, disadvantage on stealth checks. There you go. Yippee. I believe it is our first legendary item of the campaign. Dun, 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 dun. There you go. Also, I don't think it's attuned correctly because I have less AC than I did before. Well, you need to attune to it. How the hell do I do that? It requires attunement by the user with the spiritual presence of their ancestors present within the place of the armor for at least a day. So you're going to have to spend a whole day attuning to it before it works properly. No, okay, well, I'm going to keep my half plate plus one on then. Or actually, my adamantine splint, rather, is the correct term. There you go. Okay, I'm going to take away this treat because it's been fucking annoying. 
Falbrook, you see Kirith cra- like dagger her way through the the debris, and is like <laughs> she's looking around your house, and she coughs from the dust. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, you lived here. Was I don't. This I, I don't want to be rude. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna walk out. I'm going to be rude if I stay. It wasn't always this shitty. Uh huh. <laughs> sure. Kira. <laughs> yes. Just don't. Don't what? He had some emotional catharsis. He can handle a little bit of banter. Can't you, Saltbrook? She screams back over her shoulder. Fuck you. Yeah, fuck no. you too. He likes me. Go. You know he's still supposed to send you back to the hells, right? Oh, yeah. I hope he doesn't. I will walk past her into the goofy house. It's time to start looting my own house. Let's see if all the valuable stashes I left around are still here. Uh, <laughs> okay, roll investigation. Investigatory investigation investiganianto. That's going to be a 22. I spoke the magic words correctly, it seems. Let me see. Uh, that. Okay. You find and make sure to write all of these down. All right, hold up. All right, shoot. You find... In the, you find ten stashes in the house of the many mm-hmm. others that you had placed down. Only ten have uh, survived. You find in the first one 190 golden pieces. Yep. A broken key and a dead mouse. <laughs> in the second one, you find 50 gold pieces a contract for services rendered, and a vial of scented oil. In the third one, you find a hundred gold pieces, another contract for services rendered, and some garlic. Rotten. In the fourth, you find 120 gold pieces, some tangled twine, and your father's old spectacles worth roughly a hundred gold pieces. His old testicles? What? Spectacles. Damn. His glasses. <laughs> then you find a set of dice and an ivory game piece. 170 gold pieces. A rabbit's foot. Four unusual coins. And some scraps of bad poetry that you wrote when you were younger. <laughs> Finally, you find 200 gold uh, gold pieces, a crystal of sulfur, and a herbal poultice rock. And then you find another 100 gold coins. All right. That's it. Yep. <laughs> the fact that you said you put uncooked right next to rat <laughs> is so <laughs> fucking funny to me. <laughs> Project Zomboid reference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and That's 930 garlic, gold in total. Instead of <laughs> garlic, you wrote vampire kriller. Oh, man. There's a few other good ones in there. Alright. Uh, 900 and how much gold? Uh, 930 gold total. 930 gold total. Good stuff. Alright. What's next? What do y'all want to do?
Um, I'm gonna talk to Goober. Which Goober? What do you fucking think? It's all broke. <laughs> Are you, uh, okay? <clears throat> I'm just gonna shrug. Still kind of bleeding, because I got stabbed about a dozen times. I will give him one of my additional health potions. I'm gonna chug it for its entirety. Full action, so full healing. Yep, 20 HP. I'm sorry for dragging you back to your literal personal hell like this. I agreed to go. I didn't have to. But it has proved fruitful enough. I'm going to throw the pult ass on the ground because it's not very useful. Bitch, I'll take it. It's rotten. Oh. <laughs> I didn't catch that, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, I'll be a little dramatic. Like, you're a good man, Saltbrook. Sure. I will leave him to be emo in peace. I'm just gonna walk out. There's nothing in this house left for me. <laughs> <laughs> you can be emo in my house, but I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be emo in my house anymore. I'm done. Yeah, sure, you can be emo in my house. I don't care. Oh, why, why, why are you making me do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let me leave. Nuh uh. Get back in the house. Um, I know you said there were eighth forging, but I will still look at the juggernauts for potential parts. Okay. Give me an investigation. Oh, but it's a shitty roll. Mm -hmm. I will assist with the investigation using my. Holy fucking shit. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm hand you the spectacles. <laughs> <laughs> you need these more than I do. Besides, I only got one eye. Roll again. <laughs> In my defense, it's the trauma. Roll again with advantage. Really shut the fuck up. Oh. Eight. With advantage, damn it. Nineteen. There you yeah. go. As you <laughs> put on the spectacles, much like an old woman would, your vision clears and you check the first uh, you check number six and number seven and as you're going through uh, their plating you manage to find um, a serial number these not being the ones that you first investigated you realize that these are tense forging Mm. What's the serial number? Serial number is X L X X V M M C D L X one one. You want to translate that, big boy? That will be forging ten. Unit number zero seven seven four six three out of one hundred thousand. Okay. What can I take off of this man? You can see an intact left foot, intact left arm, and some extra parts in its chest that are still intact. Oh, fuck yeah. I will start carving this bitch like a dead animal. <laughs> Like, with vigor. I want to make that clear. I will take all of its pieces and parts. As you do, Ethel, and once you get to the chest, by carving the chest area, you expose the Warforged's core. And you see that it has been split in half. Did I need that, or...? You don't need that. I'm just telling you what you see. Okay. Don't 
care. Next robot. <laughs> uh, give me the investigation on the next one. As much as I have come to love the Warforged, um, I am quite literally on a mission, mission here. I am going to kill myself and then D&D Beyond. In that order. I don't care if it doesn't make sense. <laughs> you have advantage on investigation rolls due to the spectacles. That's stupid. Life. What about a 10? <laughs> With a 10, you manage to find uh, intact and still living uh, dark wood fibers that can and should graft well uh, for the left arm and the left leg. Interesting. Okay. I'll like gently pair them off and preserve them with like that same poultice that I've been using. Okay. Put inspiration on your page. One out of three, baby. Oh yeah, we could stack those now. Mm-hmm. Ethel? If you're done with your little, uh, you know, blow up doll over there. Oh, would you shut it, Tirith? <laughs> Come on, it was pretty funny, huh? And she looks over at you, Saltbrook. Pretty funny, huh? It won't be so I fucking funny if we fuck this up the second right time. Now. Huh? I said it won't be so fucking funny if we screw this up a second time. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. I call for my BB and start strapping these fucking parts to his back. What the hell are those? Shh, I'll show you later. Is that what? Oh my god, don't you start too. It's a foot, isn't it? I just hold it up in front of his face. Yes, it's a fucking foot. <laughs> I hate my goober. All right. What's next, y'all? I mean, am I still missing pieces or do I have enough to like put homeboy back together? You do have enough pieces. Well, I suppose I, for shits and giggles, would try the sending stone emoji, see if it works. Okay. Go on. Okay, I hold the rock and I say mochi. Stop, stop, that's fucking shit, I swear to God. Oh my God. Mochi, can you hear me? And I have to fuck you up. Okay. Can I get a number six with the pickles? Yeah, okay, thank you. What? No, 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 number six, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, no pickles, thank you. Okay, so either he's fully lost his mind and we're totally screwed, or this universe's mochi is useless. And we're just screwed. I doubt this universe has a mochi anymore. Hello? Hello? Can you open a portal or not? Who is this? Ugh. Fucking a Thilden. Fucking Thilden? Hold on, let me look at my books. I throw the rock to Kirith at this point. I don't want it. Hello? Machi? Machi, can you hear me? Oh, hey, Kirith. How's it going? 
Calls pretty good. How come you don't know who Ethel is? I'm fucking with her. <laughs> okay, great. Anyway, can you open a portal for us? A portal? Uh, I just did it. I have to deal with Mr. Mr. Scally face over here. I have to take him down for a while. He'll be back in a, in a few hours. Yeah, okay, but are you able to open the portal? Not until tomorrow. So, yeah. Is there anything else you need? No, not really. And then he, she, um, she puts the, the stone to the side. She looks at all of you. She says, he says he can't open the portal until tomorrow. Okay. So, what do we want to do? Off to the armory, of course. Time. What? Off to the armory. You want to dick around more out here? Yes. I say we just head back the way we came. Maybe if we get closer to where we came in, it'll be easier for him to get for him to get us back. I doubt that. Besides, the armory is a short walk this way. It's not far. I mean, we could, could we could stay the night and then head for the for the place. Then we can get you some armor that isn't that um, leathery. Does everyone have beef with me today? No, I'm just looking out for your best interest. I mean, to be fair, your armor is not up to snuff right now. Think it's about this. One leathers, God. The free piece of armor. I'm not going to charge you for it. Oh my God! Just lead the way. I would, right. but I don't live here, so. Follow me. I'm going to trundle off towards the east. So attuning with the armor rod. Mm -hmm. uh, how? You are going to have to spend a whole hour in-game uh, communing with the spirits of your ancestors. Okay, so when... Oh, well, just do it tonight then. Don't sleep. <laughs> if you don't sleep, you will take a level of exhaustion. So, uh, attuning to an item requires a creature to spend a short rest focused only on that item while being in physical contact with Okay. Well, maybe when we go to rest, I'll take an hour before bedtime and do that. All right. Sounds good to me. Cool, yeah. Then we shall go to the armory and probably camp out there because it's probably one of the more secure places in the dead city. There you go. All right, let's go. The armory. You throw the dead bodies outside. So you're Naturally, not next to dead bodies. And uh, where's the? Is that two thallions? Yeah, I left one over here because it was flying. <laughs> Ooh, thallions! <laughs> Ooh, thallions! Because I'm the main character and I get two dragons. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> I would like to go see if the bunker still has stuff inside of it. You mean investigation check? Investigation, investigory, investiconium, invest upon me thy investigation roll of not dog ass. Not 20, baby, let's go. <laughs> I'm so happy that worked for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, you motherfucker, you actually got that. Um, 
Okay. Um, hold on. Yeah, there you go. Fuck, I didn't I didn't expect that. Uh okay. I didn't either. Just hey, I'm saying the magic words right, so we're going. <laughs> Let me see. My spell worked IRL. Uh, you should make a short out of that rod. Give me a random number from 1 to 10. Let's go with 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now give me an... Uh, Ethel, give me a random number from 1 to 10. 3. Okay. You have found a... Walk 19. Is that... Okay. You have found a an armor, a plate armor of resistance. And Ooh. this armor, plate armor, let me just make sure. Resistance. This armor of resistance is resistant to fire damage. You have resistance to one time of damage while you wear this armor. Uh... In your plate. Yeah. So it is heavy armor. Um, your AC is 18. Uh, Jesus. Your AC is uh, 18. <laughs> but you get disadvantage on stealth checks. Oh, there's worth it. The... Armor of fire resistant plate. Go. Yep. You get. I'll give you a second dead rat for it. I mean, uh, we came here to give you the armor for God's sake, so I don't want the second dead rat uncooked rotten. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, don't take my second dead rat or my like eight week old catfish. There you go. Okay, well, listen, if you gave me a rat cooked. Rotten? I might consider it. <laughs> Cooked rotten? Yeah. <laughs> Why that? Sensei Shu just said, boom. Also, welcome to the chat, bud. Thank you for being here. Um, but yeah, no. Ethel, your AC is now 18, and you have uh, resistance to fire, which you already had, thanks to your dragon's blood. I was going to say, so does that stack? <laughs> it does not. Fuck you now take want. only a quarter day. Well, it's fucking 18 armor, ja, my man. You'll be fine, you know? Yeah. It's 18 AC. It's better than having, like, 16 AC and getting murdered three times in a row. Very true. <laughs> Alright. As the night arrives, and you all sit around the campfire, reflecting on well, the what events of today. What do I find? Oh, yeah. What do you I'm looking for some arcane weapons that might be hectic. Arcane weapons? I'm mostly just looking for something hectic to utilize. Okay, give me ten. Uh, give me a number from one to ten. I know with ten, of course. You find a <clears throat> okay. <laughs> The icky blicky. Okay. You find the shovel of burrowing. This My shovel. God. This shovel, which weighs five pounds, functions like a mundane shovel until you stand astride it and speak its command word. It then hovers beneath you and can be ridden into the ground. It has a burrowing speed of 10 feet and can carry up to 400 pounds. The shovel Let's cannot go. burrow through solid rock. You know what? I can see this being useful. Believe it or not, yeah. I will happily take the shovel of burrowing with me along. Uh, there. Shovel. And. Shovel of burrowing. This is an. This is a wondrous item. Nice. It's now in your equipment. 
Is there anything else in the armory, or is it just all kind of mid equipment at this point? Um, what else are you looking for? Something. I think I'd like something ranged in my arsenal in case I have to not magic. Hmm. Okay, l let me ask. How well stocked is this armory? Not very. That's fair. It's been a while. Yeah. I'll take a perusal onto the range section and see if there's anything good there. Okay. I call um... trick arrows. I'll look for some trick arrows, see if there's anything in there as well. I mean, I am still wearing spectacles, so... True. Although, I, uh, the the armory My we found... My element eyes apparently don't fucking work in this universe. No, they <laughs> don't. That's why you need the spectacles. Okay. Um, You find, Ethel, an unbreakable arrow. Okay. What this does... Uh, this arrow can't be broken except when it is within an anti-magic field. Mm, okay. Infinite ammo glitch. Yeah. Adding a single arrow. It says arrows, but it's unbreakable arrows. As for you, Saltbrook, you're looking for a ranged weapon? Yes. Okay. Mm. You find a javelin of lightning. Interesting. This javelin is a magic weapon. When you hurl it and speak its command word, it transforms into a bolt of lightning, forming a line five feet wide that extends out from you to a target within 120 feet. Each creature in the line, excluding you and the target, must make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw, taking 4d6 lightning damage on a failed save, and half as much on a successful save. A lightning bolt turns back into a javelin when it reaches the target. Make a ranged weapon attack against the target. On a hit, the target takes damage from the javelin, plus 4d6 lightning damage. The javelin's property can't be used again until the next dawn. In the meantime, the javelin can still be used as a magic weapon. That's pretty solid. I'll take that with me. And there it is. Oh, that's the armory looted, then. There you go. Perfect. As night falls in Fairhaven, Spaltbrook, you hear the owls that used to inhabit this city. It's almost as if they're returning here for the first time in a very long time. In fact, on the night of the attack, you did not hear them at all. Not even after the attack was finished. Will you spend the time trying to attune to the uh, the armor? I will spend an hour before bedtime to attune to the armor, yes. All right. There you go. <laughs> So it's a breastplate. Your armor class is 17. Cool. There we go. And I believe that'll be it, everyone. Good mm -hmm. stuff. Question. Mm. It's AC 17. Does that include the plus 3? Or is that just the default of the breastplate armor? Huh. It should it should be giving you plus three. Hold on. Let me check something. Uh 
Okay, I'll have to fix it in my... Um... I can just override it in the customization to do 20. And that's a slapdash fix. So, that... so it should be AC 20, right? Yeah, your AC should be 20. Okay, right, I'll just override just it to be 20. override it to 20 for now. I'll fix it in my homebrew section. Because I made the, oh. the armor. Oh, good. Um, all right. Everyone, thank you so much for participating. I had a blast this session. Saltbrook, phenomenal work. Everyone, don't forget mm. to level yourselves up. And I will see you all next time. So thank you. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. My name is Markiplier. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier. Hello, everybody. My name is Markiplier. Markiplier.